Yo, what's up? This is your boy Postman, and you're tuned in to Post in a Diary Room. Welcome to Post in a Diary Room. And as you may know, every day is a good day to get a delivery from the Postman. And of course, if this is your very first time tuning in, please kindly like, share, subscribe, comment, do whatever is necessary to engage with the content. Rap superstar, businessman, and celebrity boxer Casper Nuvest has released a brand new project title, Solomon. Now, this is an album that was named after his best friend, Capo. And importantly, this album was pushed back due to clearance issues but then as soon as that was sorted out he decided to drop it on the same day as nasty c this album is 11 tracks long and it's just under 40 minutes in length the project consists of three features namely majero do boy nobantu vilagazi as well as his designer windows 2000 the album also didn't have a crazy rollout in comparison to his previous works and on production there's tweezy ganja beats gemini major just to name a few and throughout the listen of this project, you will then realize that Casper seems to be on a different time right now. And the song Bashimane kind of heightens this thought because that's the song where Casper Nyovest calls himself the boss and he more or less reflects on his past to where he is currently. And importantly, he makes mention of the fact that he's not really chasing that hit song anymore. And for me, that Vanak cadence he had going out there was really deadly it's always made him deadly and it continues to make him deadly former mafia boss mike francis shares some free game on the song huja bless the song has a laid-back tempo with piano keys and casper Nyovest opens up about having growing pains seeing that he's now pushing 40 while on the other hand balmain is made up of an intense bounce with glaring 808s casper Nyovest also sends a stray to ntlantla lax because you may remember that ntlantla lax put out a tweet saying that members of the EFF came to his house and ultimately blew up and killed his entire family. Uh, yeah, really, yeah, really, please. Along with this, he talks of how he has been able to maintain his brand over the years and how he contributed towards the elevation of SA hip hop. We can't really deny the fact that Casper Nervest has consistently put in the efforts and he worked really hard because essentially, this man is living proof that hard work pays off. The bridge to hook link for me was the highlight of the song. It so happens that Casper Nyovia sampled Aretha Franklin's Ever Changing Times and he didn't really change the title of the song. He kept the title of the song, essentially paying homage to the, uh, to the, to the you know, I was going to say the late, but I'm not sure if she's late, but I think she's not late, but to the to to the legendary star, the legendary superstar Aretha Franklin, there is a nostalgic feel that that sample brings to the song, you know. And Casper Nyovest also opens the song up with a whispery tone. But before we know all of that, he's then into the next phase of the song where he's talking about who put SA Hip Hop on the map. But importantly, he also gives credit to his his rivals because his rivals actually kept him fired up every single time because if it wasn't for them he wouldn't have been able to go so hard but we all know who his arch rival was and that's the late aka that's the same man who taunted him that's the same man who managed to challenge casper Nuvest every single time despite their beef despite their wars and rivalry casper Nuvest actually took time to pin a tribute in honor of his nemesis because we tragically lost the mega to gun violence and obviously, this was met with a lot of criticism from the Megacy, which is understandable. But in my opinion, the man sounded so genuine and vulnerable. Yes, he had issues with the man, but death was just not how the beef was meant to end, if it needed to end. But death is just, you know, super, super, super wrong, at least in that light. You know, it would have been different if it was maybe a natural cause, you know, but I don't think the beef was meant to end that way. But Godspeed to Casper Nuvez for actually having the guts to write the song Candlelight. To be honest, I knew that Windows 2000 was a designer because he had a brand. I think it was called Stuff Only. And he was a musician at the same time. But now he's, he seems to have assumed the role of being full-time designer to Casper Nuvez, which is all fine, all good and well. Because the first time I came across Windows 2000 was on SoundCloud and he had the joint called i don't shop at the mall and was really a jump especially when i was still in high school and in this one chomi lava friend <whistles> wow man this joint is so beautiful because windows 2000 actually channeled a different pocket 
which was really great to hear. And on the other hand, Casper Nieves brought out his lover boy bag and he addresses a girl he fancies, but it's just that Upapawake is a red flag for Casper Nieves. And there's a repetition of the part where he asks her to bring her a cold one from the fridge. And there is a link with that, or there's a link formed by those words, making the, the two verses seamless. And I think, in my opinion, the song did not really need the contribution of Nobandu Bilagazi because her contribution was really forgettable. And I really love the song. This is the best song on this project for me. There is what sounds like plain chords and sample on the song Beautiful Mind, where Casper Nieves shares a story of how this very beautiful woman curved him and uh, she didn't want to give him his number, you know. This is a song that's essentially made for the gents who've been in that position where you just meet it's a really wonderful girl, man. You guys click in real time, but you guys never speak again, you know, for various reasons. It's either Bambi Zile or Aitnai. She just doesn't want to give you a number anymore. A guy maybe Instagram handle, you know, but when you get to Instagram, she's not really active. You know, that type of vibe. I think it's really expected for Casper to rap at this level or like this now because he made it clear as day when he did the song Egyptian Cot. The aggressive delivery on After 10 is married with the snare drum and Casper Nieves looks back on how long it took him to build what he has and there's also a clever wordplay out there where he mentions Wutiena he makes money in four ways and if I stand to be corrected if I'm not wrong right Casper Nieves actually has a business that operates in four ways and the switch to the next part of the song with the nasty C adlibs was crazy but it was made with a lot of basic material, like him saying diamonds are, dan are dancing like toss. Hey, that's crazy, man. Speaking of crazy things, I think the crazy thing for me is that 018 is arguably the worst song on this project. I don't like the song. I think the song is really horrible, especially for this project. I don't know where it sits. I don't know why it was there. Or, you know, yeah, I don't know. Like, because it sounds like my clear dope boy was just off on this one because yes Madlera Topoi makes words sound so cool but there is no breakdown that can trick me into liking what he did on the song because I think his verse was too long and he was really off form you know and I don't really expect the man to kill every verse he's on but wow this was just what you know but Casper Nieves essentially bodied him. We took him to school. And the song got better when Casper Nieves came on, to be quite honest. I don't like the song in general. But I did enjoy the panning towards the end of the song. And to me, it sounded like he also sampled the spinners on the song. It's not the same. The song is about how different life is for Casper with him. You know, letting you niggas know that he's now driving cars that you motherfuckers are hiring for MDs. It does sound like the band was involved, judging by how the drums actually sound really full on the song. The song has a really luxurious feel. And Casper Nieves on the last song, he mentions how he shares struggle with ministers. Hey, boy, I don't think that's a flex, to be quite honest. But the outro is really dope. And this is really my favorite Casper Nieves. You know, he sounds really free-spirited. He's talking his shit. He's going about it the best way he knows how. He's just doing his own thing, you know, and... Shout out to Casper Nieves for this project. Overall, this is my favorite Casper Nieves project. And this is the oldest version of him. And I think that I can hear the growth. And he sounds like someone who's really in touch with his reality. However, the downside for me on this project was the lack of contextual depth. Because he relied a lot on repetition. I think we heard it a few times with he has money. I heard it a few times that niggas are not on his level. But yeah, I guess that's that's on him really. But for me, it was really too repetitive. And the highlight was, of course, the song Chow Me Love a Friend. It's not a really bad album. It's not a bad album because for me, it gets a 7 out of 10. There is a lot of replay value out here. And sonically, it makes sense. It's just that I still don't like 018 and it's not going to change any time ever. Post in the diary, please kindly like, share, subscribe, comment. Do whatever is necessary to engage with the content. And most importantly, I will see you on the next one.